see you next Welcome, and today we are going to be talking about color theory and paint mixing. I'm going to start with the basic assumption that you have seen a color wheel before. So you know that red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors, and that by mixing those colors together you can get orange, green, and purple. And that complements are the colors on the opposite ends of the wheel from each other. So theoretically, this color wheel is nice. You can get the full range of colors just from the three primary colors, but the theory doesn't always work out. It is more complicated in practice. Mixing color requires a more comprehensive understanding of color theory, and there's more to it than just this wheel. Red and blue don't always create a really nice purple. Blue and yellow don't always create a really nice green. Red and yellow don't always create a really nice orange. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you. It is because of pigment quality, color bias or temperature, and the fact that there's another color wheel that may or may not be better. <laughs> so let's just jump into it. To show why pigment quality matters, I'm going to compare several paints that I own. I have three burnt umbers, a craft paint, a Grumbacher artist paint, and a Roscoe Super Set. Swatching them out, you can immediately see they do not even look like the same color, and adding white helps you see the difference more clearly. Doing the same test with three different raw umber paints shows the same thing. Straight out of the tube, these colors aren't the same, and so you know already that if you try to mix with them, the results will be inconsistent and the cheaper pigments will be unpredictable and dull. But something more interesting happens when you compare two colors that are supposed to be the same. Here I have two cadmium reds, and straight out of the tube you can tell the difference in the quality. The Liquitex one just kind of looks like a turd. When you swatch them out, they don't look too different. However, when you start to add in white, you can tell that the latex paint is rather muddy, while the Windsor & Newton creates a really nice pink. If I start trying to mix these cadmium reds, the results will be very different, which I'm going to demonstrate with a cheap blue that has the audacity to call itself primary blue, and a better quality Windsor & Newton ultramarine blue. Mixing the cheap red with the cheap blue should make purple, but it honestly looks more gray than anything. Mixing the cheap red with the nice blue is a little better. It at least looks purple, but it isn't very good. The nice red with the cheap blue again creates a purple that is just okay. The nice red and blue together create the best purple. This really demonstrates why your pigment quality is important. Colors might appear to be the same, but they will create very different results. In theater, most of the time we aren't using artist paints. We use house paints or scenic paint. There's a time and place to use house paints, but they will not work well if you try to mix with them. The pigments that they use in house paints aren't as nice as the pigments that are used in scenic paints, like Roscoe. And house paints also have a lot of fillers and surprise dyes and pigments that might be hiding in certain deep colors, so if you're trying to create a nice tan from a chocolatey brown color that you have, you might end up with pink instead because the pigment quality is not good in house paint. Now onto color bias or temperature. In talking about color bias or temperature, we're talking about how warm or cool the color is. And so reds tend to be warm, blues tend to be cool, but it is more complicated than that. There can be cool reds as well as warm blues. A red that is biased towards purple is cooler, but a red that is biased towards orange is warmer. The warmth and coolness of a color is all relative. A purple is warmer than a blue, but it is cooler than a red. It is this idea of color bias and temperature that is the reason behind Roscoe creating the three primary scenic kits that they have. If you haven't heard about it yet, Roscoe has come out with a series of scenic sets that each have four jars of paint in them and each serve a certain purpose. So they have a cool primaries kit, a warm primaries kit, and an intense primaries kit, as well as a bunch of other kits for foliage and sky and dirt, you know, all the useful things for a scenic. 
And without understanding color bias and temperature, you might wonder why they have three primary kits. Surely there's only three primary colors, you just need one kit. But that is not so. And I'm going to show you why. Taking just the three primary colors from the cool kit to make a color wheel looks like this. And here's the warm kit. Neither of these wheels looks like the traditional color wheel. And you might think, is there something wrong with these kits? Or does Tessa not know how to mix color? No, it is because of the color bias and temperature. So to demonstrate this, we are going to create a nine color color wheel instead of just six. We'll put the cool and warm reds, yellows, and blues next to each other and mix the colors accordingly. The cool red and the cool yellow together create a muted orange. The warm yellow and warm blue together create a muted green. The warm red with the cool blue creates a purple that is also muted. So what is happening here? You would think that you would at least get good colors when you mix cool with cool and warm with warm, but you have to take into account the bias. The yellow and blue I mixed to make green have orange and purple in them. It is the orange and the purple that is making this green so muddy. If you break down the other colors, there is the same issue. The red and blue I mixed for purple have green and orange in them. You have to identify the colors within each paint to avoid dull color mix surprises. If I do this exercise again, but flip each color, the results are very different. The warm red with warm yellow create a bright orange. The cool yellow and cool blue together create a bright green. The cool red and the warm blue create a purple that is also bright. In breaking down each color, you can see why these colors turn out better. The red and yellow are both biased to orange. In the purple, the blue and red are both biased to purple. There aren't underlying conflicting colors, so by playing with the color bias, you can make a bright color wheel. The bias of your colors will influence your results. Knowing about color bias is helpful because it will save you time and paint. Often in theater, we're already creating colors that are very muddy, and so if I want a muddy orange, I can just start with a cool red and a cool yellow, instead of using a warm red and a warm yellow and then adding a third color to muddy it down. And so the final reason why your colors might not be working out, and the theory isn't turning out as nice as you think it should, is because you're using the wrong color wheel. You kind of were lied to in elementary school because there are more primary colors than just red, yellow, and blue. And in fact, red and blue kind of aren't primary colors. In the CNY color wheel, you can mix red and blue, which as a primary color shouldn't be possible. But when you do mix magenta with yellow, you can make red. When you mix magenta with cyan, you can make blue. The CMY color system creates colors that are a lot more vibrant, which you can demonstrate through Roscoe's Intense Primaries Kit. It is their version of CMY. The cyan is replaced with phthalo blue because phthalo blue is the closest equivalent. It is a greenish blue, very vibrant, very nice, and so it pretty much works the same when you're mixing paint. So as you can see, when you mix the intense colors together, we create the best color wheel we have seen thus far. It is especially interesting to compare the intense primaries with the cool primaries because the only difference between these kits is the deep red and the magenta. And now, this doesn't mean that you should toss out the old color wheel with red, yellow, and blue. It's not that it's wrong, it's just it has its pros and cons, it has its place. If you already know that you want to mix a purple that isn't as vibrant or nice, or an orange that isn't as beautifully saturated, then you already know you can start with reds instead of magenta. But it is important to understand and know the value of magenta because of the number of designs that we're getting nowadays in theater from computers. It's been rendered in Photoshop or another program, so the designers are using and expecting the vibrancy that they get from the CMY wheel. So if you're trying to mix a color that this designer gave you, and you should be using magenta, but you're using red, the designer will be disappointed when it's not as vibrant as what they want it to be. This has been just a really basic and quick overview into color theory. There's a lot, and it is its own 
field of study because you can get into how we optically see color, wavelengths and science. There's a lot more that can go into this, but I hope that this has been a nice overview to help you better understand your paints and why they aren't always mixing as nice as you would like them to be so that you can create the colors that you are looking for. Again, I didn't cover everything, so if you have any questions, just let me know.